You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Thursday, and we're doing it on the right day. It's the Locked On Wolverines podcast, Michigan Mailbag. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. We've been doing a lot better about that this week. Did not do it yesterday because of the travel and such. By the time I got home, I was dead from Big Ten Media Days. We got one out while we were there, while we were down in Indianapolis. Unfortunately, did not get Jake Potts, but we will try to get him tomorrow or Saturday. He made his Big Ten Network debut. Our plan was to have him on. The day it got announced, he said he, he was all for it, and then we just couldn't track each other down in a timely fashion, so it just didn't work out that way. Uh, but we do uh, have some questions. Some are Big Ten Media Days, some are other things. So let's get right to them, starting with the leaders and best, James Crudup at James Crudup 6. If the defense is a solid year similar to last year, do you see Jesse Minter getting NFL interest, and do you think he wants to return to the NFL? Listen, if the NFL comes calling, absolutely that's going to be something that any defensive coordinator is going to want, assuming it's a kind, you know, in-kind role, right? It's, as long as it's not like, hey, we want you to be the, uh, you know, be our linebackers coach or something like that, because he's already been a position coach. That said, it is relatively rare that you see NFL sniping college coordinators just because it happened with Mike McDonald I mean he was kind of he came to Michigan kind of the heir apparent to Wink Martindale and it just kind of happened sooner than I think anyone kind of thought that they were going to move on from Wink and bring in Mike McDonald but uh, in part because they weren't happy with uh, what Wink did that last year for Baltimore and because Mike McDonald had such a good year at Michigan it just was one of those things that kind of worked out the way it did uh Jesse Minter's natural fit would have been the Baltimore Ravens, and that's, you know, that position has been filled. Unless Mike McDonald just doesn't do well at all, then yeah, it's probably unlikely that uh, he's going to get the Ravens job after this year. Maybe, like, again, a couple of years down the road, that could be a different story, but usually you don't see. Unless, uh, like, you know, you have a situation like, you know, Jim Harbaugh actually does go to the NFL, decides to bring Jesse Minter along with him, that type of thing would be a little bit of a different story, but generally not. So I'm not that concerned about it uh, like I was Mike McDonald, because Mike McDonald, we knew at this time last year that he was the supposed heir apparent of the Baltimore Ravens defense. You know, I, I had said that on this show, and that ended up happening. Josh B at, or Josh Barr, Josh B, however you want to put your name, <laughs> at Jadicky. What impressed you most from the players at Big Ted Media Days? Also, who's on third? Harbaugh wasn't clear about that. That was one of those great moments, right? J- Jim Harbaugh saying, I have no comment on that, and then having that big smile, and it was the last question, so he was off. Uh, he had done his hour. Uh, as far as what impressed me the most about the players, I'm not really sure in a weird way. Uh, I, I guess the confidence, I haven't really poured back over everything that was said. So some of it's not necessarily that strong in my mind at this juncture, but it's one of those things that uh, I, I think that uh, just the the confidence, you know, they, they talked about Ohio State, and this is something I wrote about today, much to the chagrin of the Buckeyes out there, is that my takeaway having covered every Big Ten Media Day since 2016 is that there was certainly a role reversal because usually it's Michigan players kind of not wanting to talk about Ohio State and, you know, the, they'll, they'll say something, but they'll just be like, oh, we really, we really got to get them this time and stuff like that. And, uh, and the Ohio State players that are all fired up and it was the opposite this time. You can see, I just posted all the videos of uh, on YouTube, on my personal YouTube channel, of uh, every one I had a video on, and you can see it in C.J. Stroud, Ronnie Hickman, and Jackson Smith and Jigba. Like they didn't want to really talk about Michigan. I mean, even Ryan Day. Normally, they they just have this it, confidence bordering on arrogance, and they didn't have that this time. You can go back years to some of the videos I've posted, but with like I, I'll always remember, and I remember like thinking about asking the, these Ohio State players questions. I was channeling Jonathan Cooper, 
right? Uh, or thinking about when I asked Jonathan Cooper, and Jonathan Cooper was very, uh, you know, he just had this, he was so confident, you know, he, I have so many things to say, and I am ready to say it but when it comes to Michigan, and and it it was the reverse, right? Cade McNamara, you know, we expect to beat them. Eric All, we expect to beat them. I, I wasn't with Eric All for very long. I was only with him for about five, six minutes, but uh, I was with uh, Cade McNamara for about uh, 35 of the minutes of uh, Big Ten Media Days, and he got a lot of questions about Ohio State, and he also didn't shy away from the J.J. McCarthy quarterback competition, nor did he talk uh, shy away from just this idea of uh, Michigan going out and repeating its success. You know, like they talked, we heard from him as well as I believe both DJ Turner and Mozzie Smith both said, we do not want to be complacent because we understand where complacency gets us. It was like a common theme, but it didn't seem like it was rehearsed, right? Like Jim Harbaugh tends to say things that come across as being very rehearsed. Uh, this wasn't one of those cases. It just seemed like that's the mentality inside of Schembechler Hall at the moment. My brother in metal, Michael Wolf at MWolf21. Have you learned anything at Media Days that has you more excited for the start of the season? Um, I don't know that I learned anything that got me excited for the start of the season except for, well, Jim Harbaugh's mystery freshman, which appears to be Kenneth Grant, if you kind of connect the dots from, uh, from what Bruce Feldman was saying. Uh, on Twitter, the mystery freshman being that Jim Harbaugh said that one particular freshman was a gift from the football gods, and he wouldn't name who. Um, and then, obviously, the the freshman receivers, they got just tons of pub uh, from the players as well as Jim Harbaugh, kind of all of the above. And Jim Harbaugh also saying that he, he really feels like this defense – you know, it said last year that we had a no star offense and look how that turned out this year. We, we have a no star defense. We think it's going to be, it, it's going to be a situation where they might be better than last year. I don't, I don't know, but I don't necessarily disagree. Right. Because I, I honestly think that this defense is going to be a lot better than people think. Now talk to Joel Klatt. You saw that interview on Tuesday uh, I, I don't think that he he shares my confidence. Normally, he shares my confidence in any position or any situation. Sometimes he's more confident. Last year, he was like the offensive line, defensive front. I was like, uh-uh, I'm not feeling either of those, and look at how that turned out. But I feel pretty confident in the defense. Now, they got to go out there and actually do it, but I feel like people are really sleeping on it. Like I think this is going to be – Joel Klatt said they'll, they'll – likely repeat as Big Ten champions if they have a top 25 defense to go along with how good we think that offense is going to be. I think they'll have that. I don't think it's going to take this giant step back. Like, people, for whatever reason, seem to think will happen. I don't I don't know why. KRTF Farmer 84, DJ Turner didn't even start to begin the season last year and then became the best cornerback on the field. Now, one of the four at Media Days. Is it a stretch to say he'll be even better this year with more confidence and a leadership role? If you are at Big Ten Media Days, you're certainly a leader. Doesn't mean you'll be a captain, but you'll certainly be a leader. Usually you kind of get an idea of who some of the captains might be. Doesn't always end up that way, but usually you get a pretty good idea. Uh, you'll definitely be a leader, and you'll definitely be a playmaker. Think back to uh, 20, what was it 2018 Big Ten Media Days. They brought Jordan Glasgow, and everyone was like, what? They're bringing Jordan Glasgow? That guy's like occasionally a special teams guy. Goes from that to being starting linebacker and a big, uh, not a big, uh, but the NFL uh, goes to be his, Ah, wow, words. They mean something. It goes on to be an NFL draft pick. So I, I think that uh, usually it's a pretty good indicator. And I think that uh, that DJ Turner being invited, especially when there's other guys that certainly I would have envisioned, you know, usually you know, every Harbaugh always brings seniors. Not every team does that, obviously. CJ Stroud was there, and he's not a senior. Uh, but, uh, usually, you know, Harbaugh only brings seniors. There's other seniors on this team that, you know, certainly could have gone. I mean, Luke Schoonmaker could have gone instead of Eric All, but he brought Eric All. Uh, could have, uh, could have brought, uh, Jamon Green, who has been a starter. Could have brought, um, Michael Barrett, who's been a starter, very well could start again this year. Could have brought... Uh, either Mike Morris or Taylor Upshaw. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys. And then you look on the, on the 
offensive line, I mean, we didn't have an offensive lineman. He tends to like to bring offensive linemen. Didn't bring Ryan Hayes. Could have brought Olu. I know he's a transfer, but could have brought Olu. Could have brought uh, any number of guys. And so DJ Turner being one of the ones included tends to indicate that they have a very high opinion of what he's going to do this year. Finishing us out in segment one. Jonathan Joseph at Joseph 2156 Do you agree with Rich Eisen's take from last week that the Big Ten will force the issue with new teams on Michigan uh, because every major national rivalry in the Big Ten revolve around Michigan? I do agree. Do you see them setting this up in Michigan not playing USC for a couple of years? Uh-uh. That's happening right away, man. <laughs> that is happening Right away. The question is, they play in L.A. or are they going to play uh, in Ann Arbor? I hope it starts in Ann Arbor because I'm, I'm not into midweek uh, five-hour flights, you know, mid-season five-hour flights. Ain't into it. Better get used to it, though, I guess. I've got my anxiety pills ready to go. Get accustomed to flying much more. Just let's hope that if they do the, the home and away, that they don't have both U- USC and UCLA, like, on the road in one year. I hope they split that up. But yeah, because I do agree with him. And, you know, if you go, he talked about, like, you ask a Wisconsin fan, who do they want to beat? They want to beat Michigan. That's accurate. I, I talked to, to a uh, one of my colleagues from Wisconsin uh, this past week at Big Ten Media Days, and he was like, it's a shame that, that's, that this isn't going to be an annual thing anymore. He's like, that, you, you're the team, you know? I, I remember going to uh, Pennsylvania to visit my aunt and uncle when I was in college, and they'd introduced me as a Michigan uh, student, and they were like, and their fan, uh, their Penn State fans around them, their neighbors and friends would be like, oh, you're our rival, even though they're, quote, unrivaled. Everyone hates Michigan the most. So, yes, it is the, that is the one. Ohio State might have been the team to beat, but Michigan is the one that seems to have that, uh, you know, that gravitas more than anybody. All right. We are going to continue here momentarily. And I got going before I even thought about any of this stuff. But anyway, before we do, betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, we have plenty more to go. Got three question askers, but more than that. As far as questions in segment two with our victors valiant. But let's get to it. Jim at Jim in the North. I want to believe in the offense this year, but the offense always seems to get a slow start and it hasn't seemed as explosive as the 16 year in a while. I'm also worried about the OC change. Speak comfort to me. Um, Well, generally they haven't had a return quarterback and Michigan has two of those. And the same offensive coordinator, the only time that that was the case in recent memory was 16 uh, and 19. Now, 19, not really going to give you a lot of comfort there but when I just say that without any kind of caveat. But Shea Patterson literally tore an oblique on the very first play from scrimmage. Good news is, if for whatever reason something happens to Cade McNamara, then you got J.J. McCarthy. So... There is that continuity. Now, I, like I just said, it is, it is not the same offensive coordinator, per se, as having Josh Gaddis and then a return quarterback. But what it is is two people who have not changed the system, running the same system, same terminology, all of that, doing their thing. Three cupcakes to begin the season. I think it'll be fine, right? They're playing against three teams with really bad defenses. If they aren't scoring upwards of 40 points and honestly probably upwards of 50 points i guess it depends on how they handle these first three games then michigan's certainly got bigger problems offense is not going to be a problem no one in the media thinks that michigan's offense is going to be a problem joel clatt came on here said the you know the michigan offense should be one of the most explosive in the country keep in mind michigan was arguably the most explosive offense in the country last year 
and it took a while for it to get that way. Maybe it'll take a little while, but the schedule is really amenable to some growing, right? Figuring some things out. I think that the, these people on offense understand what didn't work in 2020 and what has worked some of these other seasons. I mean, offense ended up being pretty explosive by the end of uh, 2019 even, once Shea was healthy. Save for the bowl game, it was a pretty good offense. But they were going up against the Alabama defense as well. So it's, uh, there's that. Will conference realignment kill college football? I'm thinking what it would be like to be a USC fan and no longer have regular access to your biggest rivals after 2024. Um, well, they will have access to, they'll still probably play their two biggest rivals. Their biggest rivals being UCLA and Notre Dame. I'm sure they'll still play Notre Dame in the non-conference, just like Michigan used to all the time. And I'm sure that'll, you know, they, that can be arranged to be scheduled late, you know, later in the season. You know, if they, if they open every year with a Big Ten game. Now think about this. What if USC opens with either Michigan or Ohio State to begin the season? How cool would that be? Or a Penn State, man. That, that would be fun. Penn State would probably end up having to face them on the road. James Franklin noted every year he's been the head coach at uh, Penn State. They've opened the season on the road. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? That is wild. But, no, I mean, they'll still get to play their biggest rivals. US, UCLA's biggest rival is USC. They just won't be playing Oregon, Washington, some of those schools. You know, Utah's relatively new to the Pac-12 as it is. So, it's... uh. I don't think it will kill college football. Yeah, some rivalries are going to go away, but did it kill college football when Texas A&M left, uh, left the Big 12 for the SEC? You know, you used to think of them and Texas being big rivals. Well, it's, they've been, it's been fun having them in the SEC. I would love for them to play Texas, but hey, whatever. Texas and Oklahoma are the bigger rivals, and uh, USC will certainly still play Notre Dame. You know, if Notre Dame doesn't get their ish together, that might be the only team that they play that's big. Looking slowly for replacements for my 07 command, uh, Commander. How good a trip car is the murder wagon? I call it murder bus. And I love it. I've had zero problems with it in the two plus years that I've had it. My Dodge Durango. It's 2017 Dodge Durango. The only thing I wish is that I would have bought a year, a year newer so I would have had an Apple CarPlay. But other than that, it's been awesome. Uh, I, I know I need to get some, some brake work stuff done and a couple other things. But I mean, it, it's still in pristine. It... it heck of a lot better than my Cadillac, which six, seven months into me having the Cadillac, I couldn't do anything. So highly recommend the Dodge Durango. Uh, it is a, I am a, I am a fan. You can say it's a fan favorite, but I am the fan that I'm talking about here. So big fan of it. Mark Z at Mark Zimke. Can you name one offensive and defensive player that are not being talked about now that could end up a first or second day draft pick next year? Um, Offensively, I mean, A.J. Henning, I think certainly could be that guy. I think he's just going to have an absolute breakout year. He can be utilized in so many ways. He's, I, I think the only thing with the skill positions on offense is it, it's hard to kind of figure that out because there's so many guys. A.J. Henning and Donovan Edwards are the two people offensively I'm the most excited about. But uh, I'll give you Olu Oluwatimi as well. I think he certainly could be a day one guy. And no one's, no one nationally seems to be talking about him. They're putting him as like, you know, second or third in the conference. I think he's going to win the Wilmington Award. You know, if players get better one year over the next. I think going from being a the, the second place Wilmington Award finalist last year, into uh, and coming to to Michigan with the coaching and the ability that we've seen, he's being surrounded by even even more players. Everything we hear about him, I think he certainly could be that guy. Um, as far as defense. Uh, well, you said first or second day draft pick. I was thinking first or second round. So, I don't know. Let me think. I'm still saying I'm going to stick with my first or second round because I think that that really could be uh, a thing. I mean, DJ Turner is, is an obvious guy, but we already kind of talked about him. Uh, Michigan corners tend to be, uh, would be a second day, you know, or a second, uh, yeah, second day guy. So, first, second, third round. Uh, Michigan corners tend to be like a third round ish. I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm just making sure I have that clear. Outside of that, 
I mean, we were talking about Mozzie Smith, so he doesn't count. I mean, Mike Morris. Mike Morris could be that guy. If, they, if he is as good as they talk about, and when you keep in mind what Michigan defensive ends end up being, we've talked about the track record re- very recently, most of them end up being either first or third round picks. Mike Morris would be my pick. It's finishing us out in segment two, Spencer Whitmore at Spencer Whitmore. Honestly, I'm not cheering for Ohio State versus Notre Dame, but I want OSU to wipe the floor with the Irish and put up 45 plus on them. Work with two Notre Dame alumni. Don't blame you. This is this one of those things where this is one of those games you can't go right, you can't go wrong. How much could it help Michigan recruiting if Notre Dame does get wiped the you know if they just get absolutely blasted by Ohio State? So here, here's a, here's the it's a dual edged sword here. If Michigan can beat Ohio State regardless, or at least play them close, and Notre Dame gets just absolutely wrecked. Michigan could have a shot to go and poach some of those Notre Dame commits out of all of those guys that Michigan seems to be coming in second for. However, you also don't want Ohio State to get confidence, and it would be nice in a way, kind of like last year, to see them struggle in week one. Listen, Ohio State tends, when it plays especially a bigger team in the first two weeks, tends to struggle early on. That's just what they tend to do. Happened last year, struggled week one, lost week two. You think back to the urban years, you know, they tended to, to lose in week two. It's always seemed like even when they were playing some kind of walkover type teams out of the MAC, you know, my friend would always call me or text me being like, uh oh, Ohio State's on the ropes, you know, at halftime. It's like 14 13, something like that against Akron or something like that. And then three minutes into the third quarter, it's somehow. 45 13 you know it's just that's how they go but uh it would if ohio state managed to struggle that would also be good but also you don't want them to find the glitch you know fix the glitch you want them to uh to not understand what issues plague them as much until later in the season rather than early because hey we can't stop the run you don't want to fig. you know you don't want them to figure out oh now we know how to fix it by the time that you get to the Michigan game. All right, we are going to continue. We got four more coming up here in a moment. All right, let's finish us out. We've got four more questions. Data guy, data guy, FL, at data guy, FL. What does Michigan need to do consistently to go to the playoffs and win once it gets there? Is it a general talent shortage, lack of a top QB, depth, it didn't seem like we belonged on the same field as Georgia. Listen, pretty much nobody did. Who was close to Georgia? Only Alabama, who beat them the first time and lost them to the second time. Uh, I think that you need size and speed combination of, and sounds like that's what Kenneth Grant is. Michigan can keep on getting guys like that, have everyone buy into a system, no malcontents, everyone pulling on the same page. That includes the coaching staff. They got a shot. Um, and I think having that next level QB, not, I mean, Stetson Bennett wasn't a next level QB, but look at what he did against Michigan. Former walk on out there playing better than most high end four stars and even some five stars, right? I mean, he had an incredible game. He was incredible down the stretch last year. So that's kind of what they need. Michigan had some dumb things that they did in that game, too, that made Michigan look bad. Slow developing plays against that Georgia defense. Are you kidding me? I know you're trying to misdirect, but you didn't have time to misdirect. Would have been better just going north and south, you know? So speed, which they have in spades. Size, they just need to continue doing what they're doing. I think if Michigan continues doing what it's doing, it it will have a shot. And also you just, what you need is having the shot and it being at the right time. I think that Michigan, if it would have played in 2016 for the national championship in the college football playoff, I think it would have won or at least been close to winning. But uh, I think you just need you need everything to coalesce at the right time. Michigan stayed healthy in 2016. Forget about it. But that's the thing is you you need your team to be moving up and maybe some of those other powers coming down. Right. Alabama being kind of in the space that Alabama was in last year. Not it's at its best. Georgia not having this otherworldly team at, at the moment, having just a mere really good team. 
It, it takes all of that. Everyone pulling on the same page. All that kind of stuff. Andrew at Engineered 97. What do you think the freshman gift from God, Jay Har or Jim Harbaugh, JH? I, I don't know. Spoke of a media day could be. I think it's absolutely Kenneth Grant. Now that I saw Bruce Feldman's tweet this morning, it was from two days ago, but I haven't exactly been on Twitter. Um, do you think that the comment was about a guy filling a need or just having supreme athletic ability? Well, based off of Bruce Feldman's tweet, he runs like a f- sub. He runs a sub five forty as a guy that's almost four hundred pounds. That's very Jordan Davis esque. So that's exactly what Michigan needs, especially because they need bodies in the middle. I really like now. Like now, suddenly, after Big Ten media days, I'm thinking about this entire. Uh, I'm thinking about this defensive line, and I'm like, hmm, maybe it's not so bad after all. Like it might not be a pass rushing crazy type deal, but neither was George's. So now I'm starting to think like, well, if you have a rotation in the interior of uh, Mozzie Smith, who we all know is a beast, I'm assuming Julius Welskoff is going to be in there. Chris Jenkins, who was mentioned by a couple players as being that next level guy. Mason Graham and Rashawn Benny and uh, Kenneth Grant. Like that, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Maybe, maybe another one of those guys, George Rooks, maybe he's ready to go. Mike Elston's a really good developer. It's starting to feel pretty good all of a sudden on the interior. And then you got the ends. Novocado at Tristan Novak. Same old question for the ages. Who deserves the starting QB job, returning Big Ten champion, or the clear superior talent? Well, it all depends on how it goes in camp, right? If JJ doesn't have the same chops when it comes to reading defenses and making the right call and all of that stuff, then it becomes a moot a moot deal. An above average quarterback, which is what Cade McNamara is, despite what many of y'all out there want to think, an above average quarterback, knowing, you know, taking care of the football, and I'm, I was batting down some people on my YouTube earlier who were sitting there saying, like, oh, when it mattered, Cade turned the ball over. Cade had, like, six turnovers overall on the year, right? Like, that's not a lot. Even if it is in your biggest, bigger games, turnovers, it, are there a part of the game? Every quarterback turns the ball over, some more than others. But six is a pretty, like, his, it was, what, 20 to six, I think, was his, uh, his ratio, something like that. I got to look here. I've got CFB stats up right now. Let's go to 2021. Passing. All right, it was 15 to six. So, I mean, it, that wasn't, maybe it's not quite as good, but, I mean, he's still got a really good quarterback uh, rating, considering that J.J. threw two interceptions. Kate having a 64.2 percentage. Uh, you still want that higher. It used to be 60% was the benchmark. Now it's not. Now you want to be closer to 70% completion. JJ is 57.6. So if if Cade is still turning the ball over at a, a smaller rate and taking care of the football, making the right read, all of that stuff, then he, you know, that that could be enough. It, you know, just because another guy's got the talent is flashy, gives you extra elements. And listen, both are going to play anyway. So that, that part almost doesn't matter. But yeah, I mean, hey, maybe Donovan Edwards is your quarterback. All right, finishing us out overall, Ike Hamlin at Hamstand87. Is the question about Michigan's defense being worse in 22 solely based on coordinator change? Because if you look at the talent level, you see a lot of high three and four stars like Raiden McGregor and so on. I think it's that. And Aiden and David Ajabo, but while some people were fawning over Aiden Hutchinson, I I mean, a a lot of people were just like, yeah, he could be pretty good. No one was thinking he was going to be as good as he ended up being. Maybe pro football focus. Some of those guys, I feel like, were on that train. But, you know, like, guys coming from out of nowhere. Chase Winovich and Rashawn, well, everyone knew Rashawn was, but Chase Winovich came from out of nowhere, granted, as a backup. Um, usually you get some guys come from out of nowhere every year. And I think, so you have those things. People look at Jesse Minter's resume and they say, well, Vanderbilt, but they forget about the Ravens and all of that. And yeah, they've got a lot of talent. Michigan has got a ton of talent and they've been on the team for a while. And, uh, you know, I get a bunch of Ohio state people being like, look at how much we return compared to you. 
Yeah, Michigan's got a lot of guys that weren't necessarily starters, but a lot of guys who have played quite a bit that are now starters. Good deal. All right, that's we're running out of time. That's going to do it for us today. Thank you for watching and or listening. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.